Hello and welcome to our podcast. I'm Bracken. And I'm Ariel. And this is Murder Radio. We're back. We've made it. We are corona free. We didn't have it to begin with, but we did get distracted with life. Got pretty busy there for a moment. I know you thought, oh, the podcast is done, but you're not getting rid of us that easy. We're here. We're back. And we, we've been we've been working on on some stuff in the background. You know, we can't tell you about it because it's cool and it's a secret and it might not exist. But if we tell you it does, then you think, oh, they're making moves. That's what people always say. Oh, we've been really busy working on a lot of things in the background. We can't tell you about it. Half the time, I'm like, no, you weren't. You were lazy and you fell asleep, and now you're hiding behind a veil of uncertainty, which is what we're doing right now. <laughs> No, but Ariel's been working hard on this podcast. She put a thing together that looks cool. She put it on Reddit. It got, like, a lot of likes. Like, we're pretty much famous now. <laughs> Everybody knows who we are. Well, maybe that's not true. But it will be one day. Definitely one day. Who knows? Regardless, she did this thing, made this thing. It's a chart. It's a graph. What is this called? A T chart? A family tree graph? Yes, yeah, so I made a family tree slash suspicious death tracker for today's episode. And if you want to follow along, we're going to post it on our social medias. Go check them out. Shameless plug. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. All of these places are going to have this content available for you to download. And we encourage you to go look at it because we're going to do our best to describe this to you. We've actually tried to record this multiple times already, and we've scrubbed it. And we went and practiced in front of the mirror how we were going to do this because this is a saucy. <laughs> it's confusing. Oh, my gosh. I know what I'm saying and I don't know what I'm saying. There's a lot of players. And there's a lot of direction. Mm -hmm. And then who knows? <laughs> but we're going to do our best. If you get confused, let us know. Go check out the family T chart, family tree, death tracker, <laughs> T graph, circle bar graph online. <laughs> Uh, and let us know what you think. And let's uh, who's let's jump right into it. Who says that? We do. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah, let's jump right into it. So I described all of these family members to Bracken, and since he's not as familiar with the case, actually he knew nothing about the case before we sat down and talked about it today. He's going to help me describe all of these people because for me I've been researching this case for so long now and I've sat down to write this so many times that they're familiar to me but Bracken's going to help me really explain it to you guys who don't know about them yet we don't know these people so I'm going to make sure that we do <laughs> okay so this is the Lori Vallow Daybell case it's a strange case of a cult member and suspected black widow slash family annihilator. All of these are alleged. All of these are alleged. She's in custody but hasn't been charged. Exactly. But fingers crossed she will be. You can't say that. <laughs> what if she's innocent and someone is really good at framing her? Then she's doing a terrible job. <laughs> if she's innocent, she sucks at being innocent. She is a terrible innocent person okay so it's that kind of person <laughs> it's that kind of person all right oh my gosh so let's get into it the family tree begins with Lori Valadebel. she's the bell of the ball she's the cinderella the shoe fits we think she's important but the thing about Lori is she has a lot of ex-husbands she's good at making ex-husbands very good at making If it was a job, husband. she got promoted several wow. times. Yeah. That's a great. So her first marriage was a guy, Nelson. He's not really important to the story. Most people actually don't even know his name. How do you know his name? Because I researched this case. All right. He first husband. does not want to be associated with this case. Well, you know if what? If I were him, I wouldn't either. He did nothing to do with this. He has not associated, and he got married to this woman and probably smelt the crazy and got the heck out of Dodge. Congratulations, Nelson. You you really won the story. You are not the winkest link. Congratulations. You have to go. You're leaving. He's leaving the story. Forget yep. that name. He's gone. Moved on to bigger and better things. 
Husband number two, a gentleman by the name of Wilson Lagioa. William. Oh, William. We should just change all the names and confuse the <laughs> listener. That sounds like a great idea. All right. Williamson. Okay, his name is William. <laughs> his name is William L. He is the lucky number two, the second husband to Lori. He's not really that important, except for the fact that Lori and him got busy with it one night and made a Colby. That's their son. They made a Colby, and then the marriage ended. Uh, so you have Lori. She's got this baby boy, Colby, who may not be a baby. We're not, I'm not sure how old he is, but... Then she gets into her third marriage, which, you know, they say if the first two fail, keep trying. It's, and she it, did. It's not you. It's them. You're not the common denominator. So she marries the third guy, Joseph Ryan Jr. Joseph Ryan Jr., Lori Vallow, they got married. Lori already had Colby. Joseph was probably like, you know what? Yo, daddy needs a baby. I mean, your your baby needs a daddy, and your daddy needs a baby. I'll be your baby daddy. So they adopted Colby, and then they got jiggy with it, and they made a Tylee, which is their daughter. So they have the adopted son, Colby. They have the biological daughter, Tylee, and then guess what happens between Joseph and Lori? You got it. They lived happily ever after and never got divorced again. Eh, wrong. She failed that marriage. Now, maybe it's not her. Maybe it is the men. At this point, though, is the common denominator. She's on to number four. Lucky number four. If the first three didn't work, try again. If you're listening to this and you find yourself in a fourth marriage and you're happy and it's healthy and, and you just had some assholes that you got married to the first three times, I do apologize. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just making fun of this lady because I don't think she's a very good lady. I think she's pretty scummy, so... There's my I'm sorry for being a offensive uh, post for this podcast. If you're like, dude, get over it, then uh, we'll be friends. So, fourth husband, Charles. His name is Charles Vallow. Charles Vallow and Lori got married. Now, at this point, Colby, who was uh, young enough to be in the home with Joseph, the third husband, he's grown. He's gone. He moved on with his life. He turned 18 bought a really crappy Honda Civic and drove into the sun with a clothes hampers and milk crates full of records and cassettes, just like in the movies. He gone. went off to become a radio DJ in New York City. No, I don't know. I'm just making it up. <laughs> um, so Charles and Lori, they're married. Tylee from the third marriage, she's kind of almost old enough to be gone. She's like that kind of like 16, 17-year-old age where she knows everything and you know, she's got weird tattoos and and then piercings and she's drinking um malt liquor underneath the school. I don't know, that's none of that's true. She probably did, I don't know anything. I'm just making it up. This I'm recreating an 80s movie here, but uh Don't worry, Bracken, you'll know soon. So, Tylee the now is the oldest daughter in the house uh and she's almost gone. But uh Charles and Lori they don't have any biological kids. By this point, I imagine they're older. It takes. I'm it actually takes. Not sure. It takes time age. to fail four marriages it, and have it two kids. It absolutely does. Right. They're not super old, but they're old not spring, enough to have. They're not spring grown chickens. Children. Right, but they don't have any. But they end up adopting. And this is a part that gets a little wishy washy. So put your seatbelt on and your non-slip shoes because here we go. They end up adopting. The grandson, of Charles's sister. So Charles has a sister. Her name is Kay. And Kay and her husband Larry are the grandparents to this child that Charles, the fourth husband, and Lori adopt. This child's name is J.J. Vallow. He is, and now he's been adopted. For whatever reason, maybe it was a better circumstance. We don't know. Maybe they were great parents and they... I don't know. But he gets adopted. And it's important to know that Kay and Larry are the grandparents of J.J. Because they'll show up later. Um, another thing to know about J.J. is that uh, he's got a social a social disorder. 
He's autistic. He's autistic. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. And so I'm not. We don't, how is it pretty bad? Just like yeah. So he's like a non-functioning almost. Um, he needs a lot of. When he was of... seven, Charles said that he acted like he was four. Okay, so he needs help. Right. Okay, so he he, he you know he's grown up maybe not very quickly and Charles and Lori are like yo join the family. We are family. Yes. You got a sister and your brother has already left, but your sister's here for a little bit, but she's about to move out because she's older than me. And that's basically the storyline. Lori's got some brothers and some sisters and a mom and a dad. Um, Lori's brother is very important to the story. His name is Alex Cox, and we'll get to him a little bit later. Um, And Lori also has a niece named Melanie Pulowski. And we'll Ooh. get to her as well. So, If you're sitting back thinking, wow, that's confusing, then clearly you're not looking at this amazing chart that Ariel made. Shame <laughs> on you. Go look at it now. It really does help see everything. Because when I first started researching, I was like, oh my gosh, there are so many people in this story. There's even two Melanies. One ends in I, one ends in IE. It just gets really confusing so i couldn't really find anything we should call them melanie and melanie okay sounds great Lori and charles they're mormon oh so that's important to know for the story even though Lori goes kind of off on her own path um mormon is really important to them Lori was said to be a really great mom and we know the adoption process like in order to have someone be adopted it's pretty serious the family moves around they live in hawaii and arizona and in 2018 Lori gets involved with like this prepper kind of doomsday kind of cult that's an offshoot of the lds church obviously the mormon church does not like, approve of this cult And a lot of the things that they believe literally have nothing to do with the Mormon faith. But it is the basis of most people that are a part of the cult. Lori and Charles have a pretty great marriage. And without Charles really knowing, Lori gets pulled into this cult and it starts a lot of problems. While she's at one of these retreats for the cult that's called preparing a people she meets this guy named chad so chad daybell is an author he's written lots of doomsday books he has all these crazy beliefs um but he also has his own family so i think at first they meet and they just start talking and have a really great connection because they're both crazy (laughs) they both believe in this doomsday cult mentality and fun fact they believe that the world is going to end and jesus is going to come back july 22nd 2020 that's that's like right around the corner yeah that's this month come on jesus take me home just in time for covid yeah I mean, let's be honest. In the world we live in today, you're going to tell me Jesus is coming back? I'm, I'm, I'll believe you. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure all of these things in the world that are happening right now, Lori's probably sitting in her cell being like, wow, the world really is going to end. So Lori and Chad, they meet at a preparing a people event where he's speaking um, and they start emailing October 2018. And Lori and Charles are still married at this point and they're just friends who are emailing who are emailing who emails well these aren't even the normal type of emails (laughs) he emails her a freaking weird breakdown of light slash dark ratings of her family members like 4.1 d and d stands for dark was so that's not good and it's just out of this world literally i wonder what my rating would be you definitely would be rated d for dark why would you say that from this guy 
Because I'm not a Latter-day Saint? Yeah, probably. But so just so you can imagine like the types of emails that he's sending to this person who's not his wife. It just confuses me that people correspond personally over email. Right. Well, they were actually on a podcast together called Time to Warrior Up that Lori started with her friend Melanie Gibb. She's Melanie with an I-E. Melanie I-E. Mm-hmm. So he was part of an episode which has now been taken down, unfortunately. It'd be so interesting to listen to that now. A prepper podcast? Yeah. Called Time to Warrior Up. In the description, it was basically saying Lori and Melanie are these women of God Mm -hmm. who are... They're warriors. Yeah, they're warriors. Xenon, the warrior woman. They want to bring all this information to everybody. Because they're warriors. Mm -hmm. Warriors of the academia. We shall slay with our knowledge and conquer you with our large collection of leather-bound books that smell of rich mahogany. (laughs) I can only imagine how it sounded on there. But so, I feel like at this point, they were just colleagues. I mean, Chad, even during the podcast, he stayed at the house of Lori and Charles. So, kind of like a work associate, if you will. Lori and Charles, they move to Arizona. During this time, Lori is still emailing Chad, and then it starts to get weird. So Chad tells Lori (laughs) that Charles, her husband, has died and an evil spirit named Nick Schneider has taken over Charles's body. Nick Schneider? Yes. Is that a real person? Literally, Charles ends up finding out about this and he's like, who the heck is Nick Schneider? Like, I have no idea who this is. This is just this random name that... Chad believes has taken over Charles's body. So, getting weird. In this point of the story, you can really see who Lori stands with because when Chad tells her this, Lori goes a little crazy. So, Charles is actually on a work trip during this time, and she ends up taking out around $35,000 from his business account and their personal account and put it into another bank account. She's uh, making a nest egg. And she cancels his flight home from his work trip. What? And moves his truck out of the airport parking lot. What? And moves all of their belongings out of their house. What? He ends up going to the airport. So, like, you get to the airport. Yes. And they're like, sir, this ticket's no good. He's like, nah, nah, fam. I bought this. It's a round trip. Uh, It appears your wife has canceled the ticket. What? Call the wife. No answer. Ring, ring. All right. I need on the plane. So they're like, well, we only have one spot, but it's in between two sumo wrestlers and coach. He ended up having to pay $600 to fly home. Of course. So then he gets home. He's like, at least I'm here. I'll get in my truck. I'll go home. G37B. Where the heck's my truck? I don't know. It's not here. Did she just move it completely? Like, where, yeah. where, where, where'd it go? Uh, it, it took them three days for her to tell him where she parked the truck after this. So they find the... So he taxis home. And then he's like, all right, this has been a weird day. At least I'm home. Maybe the front door's ajar. Was their entire does, house just empty? I think she does change the locks, but... It did say that all of his stuff was gone, including his underwear. All of just his stuff? Like, everyone's stuff. So the house was empty? Yes. No furniture? Where did she take it? I'm not sure. She's really into storage units, so she probably got a storage unit Okay, so he gets home, and he's like, man, what a crazy trip. At least I'm home. My bed. Oh, I love my bed. Walks inside and just sees nothing. Yep. Yo, I'd be popping my head be blown up like a firecracker and then payroll is the next day and um he can't pay his employees because he doesn't have money anymore in his account because she took it out 
Yo, that is... I'd be done. I'd be so mad. <laughs> so, Charles is. He's done at this point. And he uh, files for divorce because Lori actually goes to Hawaii with Tylee. What about JJ? JJ is still with Charles. She disappears for like 50 days. To Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I bet that daughter was like, yo, this is awesome. We're going on vacation. I didn't like your fourth husband anyway. Yeah. Surf's up, dude. Cowabunga. So in this divorce paperwork, which I think is really interesting, all of the divorce paperwork in this case, it's so dramatic. And I'm so glad it's written down in a real official standpoint. Because if you just told somebody this, you'd be like, wait, what? So, in the court documents, it says, Lori is infatuated at times obsessive about near-death experiences and spiritual visions. He claims that Lori threatened to kill him if she got in his way. And got in his way of what? Well, to carry out the work of the 144,000 at Christ's second coming in July 2020. Mm. So gotta, you got to make sure that you take care of the 144,000. Right. I could see why she would be that upset. And she said that if she killed him, there would be an angel there to help her dispose of his body. Oh, okay. Well, that yeah. that makes it all better. Definitely. There's an angel. They're all for that, helping you dispose. Because that's what they're known for. 100%. Cleaning up your sloppy murder. So, obviously, during this time, he removes Lori from his life insurance policy. Makes sense. And he lets his sister Kay know that, like, if anything happens to him, this million-dollar life insurance policy is now going to her because... Um, he knows that the money should take care of JJ since his disabilities are expensive. Of course. Oh, crazy wife, you ain't getting this. Daughter that's not mine, you ain't getting this. Adopted son who's got a tough life ahead of him, you up to bat. So, for whatever reason, a month later he decides to call off the divorce and try to work things out. What? I'm not really sure why he does this, though, because he calls off the divorce and then he moves to Texas with JJ and he still is telling his friends about this evil spirit and stuff. So I'm not really sure why he called off the divorce because it still seems like he like. Because Lori told him, you didn't sign a prenup, sucker. I'm going to take you forever, dolly your word. Yeah, maybe she said she would return some of that money or something. Maybe she said she would kill him if he divorced her. "Eh." He's like, you know what? I'll just move to Texas. Probably a a good call. Um, So a couple months later, uh, Lori's niece, Melanie, with an I, she also files for divorce with her husband, Brandon. Brandon Bordeaux. And because Melanie is also in the cult. And Mel and I. Mel and I. Mm-hmm. Mm. And in their court documents, he also talks about zombies. He says some real weird stuff that zombies can come and possess people. And that's their Who said this? Mission. Brandon's getting a divorce from Melanie, who's in the cult with Lori. I know that. Who was saying about zombies? Brandon was saying that Melanie and this cult believes in zombies. Good gosh. I want to join this cult. They're crazy. They think of some fun things. Mm -hmm. They must be tripping on some good drugs. And zombies are described in the court documents as human bodies that have had their original spirits forced from them and have been possessed by either a demon or some sort of other spirit. Oh, and I always thought the zombies were undead people who had an autonomous response to feed off of brain. 
that's how it is in the movies. But for some reason, zombies for them just means somebody's been possessed. Possessed. Okay. And what gets scary is that... uh, They eat brain? Lori has said that she thinks that Tylee and JJ are zombies. Oh, shoot. Yeah. She thinks that they've been possessed. Yeah. Dang. But it makes sense though. If you're in a if you're in a cult, a religious cult, and you're an extremist, you might consider a rebellious teenager and an autistic seven year old as demon possessed. This is very concerning because Do they have like a policy like kill zombies on sight? Yeah. What do they do? That that's a part of their mission to rid the world of zombies. Oh crap. So July eleventh. 2019 Mm -hmm. Charles is shot by Alex Alex is Lori's brother what yes Lori's brother shoots her husband yes had they finalized their divorce yet they hadn't finalized their divorce and he said it wasn't self-defense of course you have to self-defend yourself from your sister's husband it's totally crazy. It wasn't self-defense. The kids were at the house. Yeah. Uh, Tylee was there and was interviewed by police. Obviously, she said what Lori wanted her to say. Lori basically packed JJ in the car and took him to school at, while Alex was shooting JJ's dad. And... For whatever reason, they really don't look into it this much. They just kind of are like, okay, it was self-defense. Um, Lori throws a pool party that night at the house. The day her husband died. Mm-hmm. A pool party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good time to celebrate. Definitely. Especially like, if like uh, you wanted him dead. I just can't really imagine going to a house where someone was shot. Oh, if I shot like, somebody, the next thing I would definitely want to do is spend an hour and hour, hours and hours in a chlorine pool because you'd never get any evidence off of me. That's true. And I'm sure all the people coming into the crime scene, they definitely contaminated it. 20 hours after Charles is shot, Lori texts Charles's older sons from a previous marriage to tell them that their father died. Mm. And they try to ask questions like, how did he die? And she said, we're still waiting to hear from the M.E. He was shot. And they're trying to talk to Lori about like, hey, can you please respond to us? Because (laughs) we want to know how our father died. Right. Our dad died. And their uh, their mom ends up like checking the website. And that's how they find out that he was shot. Wow. Wow. Like the official Emmy website that says all the information. So that around that time, Lori goes to file for Charles's life insurance and she finds out that she was taken off the policy. Ha ha, bitch. And you a trifling bitch. She's not happy. Everything related to Charles's death, she basically lies about. When she goes to school, she tells JJ's teacher that Charles committed suicide it's real weird obviously she can't say oh my brother shot him we shot him what what yeah i don't like to talk about it (laughs) and after after this Lori tries to sell jj's service dog whose name is bailey and they spent a lot of money on this service dog he puts her up on craigslist or facebook marketplace or something and the place finds out and they're like you can't sell service You can't animal. sell this dog. And so she ends up giving the dog back to the facility because she said that she couldn't take care of him anymore due to life circumstances. And this dog had really helped JJ. JJ hadn't slept through the night. The dog was really important. August 10th, JJ's grandmother, Kay, talks on FaceTime with JJ for the last time. JJ is the autistic son. Mm-hmm. And his grandmother, which is the sister of his dad. Mm-hmm. 
That makes sense. Yep. So they FaceTime. they talk on FaceTime for the mm. last time in August. And then the family moves to Idaho. Rexburg, <sighs> Idaho. Idaho. You want to move to Idaho? No, thank you. Okay. But Rexburg is where Chad Daybell lives. Uh-oh. And where a lot of the cult members live. Everyone got like, an apartment in the same complex. Lori had one. Alex had one. So they're all neighbors. And then Melanie, Melanie with an I. And this move was really sudden. The day before, Lori met with Colby in his work parking lot and was like, hey, we're moving tomorrow to Idaho. Bye. And he didn't really ask any questions. It seemed like they were estranged. Not completely estranged, but like not super close. He's like, yo, mom, you crazy. Well, because he, he had his own life. He is married and has a child. And September 8th, Tylee is seen for the last time. She's photographed in Yellowstone National Park with Lori, JJ, and Alex. Lori hires a nanny after that. Just really nonchalant. Like, says she has another kid, but she's not really in the picture. And the nanny only watches JJ a little bit. And she's supposed to be, like, the full-term nanny. And then all of a sudden, Lori said, Oh, JJ went to stay with family in Arizona. So Mm -hmm. we don't need you anymore. We don't need the nanny? Right. What in the world? And she gives like a weird story like, Charles died of a heart attack. So all these kids just start disappearing. Right. What? Nobody was really, um, nobody was there to be an advocate for Tylee. She had really close friends, but, you know, you can kind of lose touch with your friends every once in a while. But really Kay and Larry... They were advocates for JJ. They kept trying to find him. They constantly were like... They wanted to talk to him. Yeah, they wanted to talk to him. And then when things started getting weird, they asked police to like go and do a welfare check. And Lori lied and said, oh, he's staying with friends. Here's the name of a friend. Melanie Gibb. Obviously, they weren't staying with Melanie Gibb. Bum, bum, bum. From September... All the way to January, they still couldn't find the kids. They kept following up, and then Lori would move to Hawaii. How many times do you have to call for a welfare check and for the police to hear, oh, he's at the friend's, before the police are like, cool, we're going to the friend's house now. This is the 14th welfare check. You right. Know? It's just so weird because it took so long for the authorities to get involved. And I think that that I, I don't even know if that would have helped in this case. But maybe at, at least there would have been more justice. Maybe you wouldn't have like given Lori time to prepare. Right. Because she got a storage unit. So in October, she orders wedding rings on Charles's ac- on Charles's account for her and Chad. What? Yeah. Still have an account for a dead man? I guess so. He ain't paying the bill. Maybe she was paying it. And then Mel and I, her ex-husband Brandon, he reports that a gunman tried to sniper him. And what? this gunman was Alex. He was actually in uh, Tylee's car, but nobody listens. I think that's a big part of this case. Nobody really listens. He tried to tell people, like the, the TV police... Show. Yes, this definitely is, sounds is, like a TV this show. This is the, the next Hulu or Netflix special. Oh, for sure. Called Dead by Daybell. I'm sure it will be called that. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of doubt, Lori Daybell shot me in the snout. <laughs> I was dead. She took my bread, ran away to Hawaii. That's all they said. Mahalo. So in October... So, mind you, Chad is still married to his wife, Tammy. And they have five grown children together. Well, October 19th, Tammy Daybell, she is found dead at her home. Chad said that she went to bed with a cough and then she just never woke up. And it's suspicious, but they didn't want an autopsy. What's crazy about this is Chad, he 
He had had visions from God that Tammy was going to die for months, and he told lots of cult members about it. He would, like, cry and said he had these visions that his wife was going to die. God told me she was going to die, but I don't want her to die. But does anybody have any uh, antifreeze, by the way? Maybe some borax? Subtle rat poison I could use. <laughs> I don't want her to die. Luckily, uh, Tammy does end up getting exhumed so that they can run some toxicology reports That on means her. they took her body out of the ground. Yeah. They were like, oh shoot, we got to run some tests. She got put in a box and she got put six feet under and then they were like, hold up, reverse that. And then they dug her up, pulled the box out. She's still there, thankfully. That would have been crazy. Go yeah. for the body, it's gone. Then I would have been convinced we were reading the script of a new TV show. <laughs> so they exhumed her body. What happens? Well, that's not been released yet. They're, what? The, the police is holding the, those toxicology reports to their chest, which is good. That means they've got it some information. Anything. You don't think? No, because if, if it shows nothing, mm. they don't want to tell people it shows nothing because then Chad's going to be chatting around. As Chads do, oh, I'm innocent. Look at me. Oh, look at me. I'm innocent. Not even a month later, probably a couple of weeks, Chad and Lori, they go to Hawaii and they get married. <laughs> she's, oh, she's not still married because Charles died. Right. Wow, they don't wait very long, huh? Mm-mm. They're really good at mourning. Oh, definitely. They're efficient. They are efficient mourners. They're like, all right, you're dead. I'm going to spend 15 minutes crying. 10 minutes putting myself back together. And would anybody like to go out for drinks and Korean barbecue later tonight? Well, if anything, Lori ordered wedding bands for them before Tammy was dead. Oh, crap. Yeah. So she's real good out mourning. She's she's preemptively over it already. Yes. It's like she knew something was coming. Yes. She's got a sixth sense. Uh, so they got married. You know what Chad? You know who Chad reminds me of? Who? Chad reminds me of, like, the kind of guy that would eat an entire 7-Eleven pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely. And then drink a chocolate milk. And then go on a run. Oh. And be fine. Yeah. Well, well, they were, like, living their life. They had all these professional photos taken at their wedding. It's not like they were, like, hiding and getting married. They were... Proud. Proud. Well, they executed their plan correctly. Yes. It's not easy killing off two people. Like, so no one noticed that an eight-year-old autistic child is just missing? They do. And they're, they're not at the wedding? That that freaking Tylee is not at the wedding? Mm-hmm. That she just left? Oh, well, they applied for an apartment in Hawaii, and they said that they didn't have any children. So... So where did JJ go? She had until January 29th okay. to produce her kid. Oh my gosh. And she didn't. She failed it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And during this time, during this September to January, other weird things happen like so- Alex, her brother, gets married to this lady called Zulima past Dennis in Las Vegas and they he took her last name progressive he also had allegedly been killing people it was probably a good look for him to have a different name at that point um and the people in Las Vegas they're like yeah this ceremony lasted eight minutes and just seemed business not like a marriage (laughs) hello Zulema hello Alex, ready to proceed with our notion? I do. I do. Indeed. Done. Do we have a witness? Uh, The security guard was the witness. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And then, uh, like, a day later, Mel and I, she gets married to Ian. Love's in the air. Mm -hmm. Everybody's killing and getting married. Well, and Ian had just gotten divorced like a couple weeks before, too. So these people, they really do move on quick. 
But Alex was their witness at their wedding. So let's skip to January. They file in they file for emergency guardianship, Larry and Kay do, um, which is so sad because they're really trying to find him. Yeah. They're, they've they've got a million dollars sitting in bank account that they can't spend on themselves. So they're like, let's take care of this kid. Lori officially gets charged with desertion, non-support of a dependent, and she gets arrested Be- and some other things. Because too. she had, doesn't have JJ anymore. Right. Because she can't produce JJ. They're literally photographed at the grocery store, like holding hands. People, at, at this point, people are freaking out. Like, news people travel to Hawaii and they're like, Lori, where are your kids? And she's like, no comment. What? Yeah. How do you say no comment? Because you killed them. Yeah. They're in the bottom of a hole. Uh, uh, yeah. So, they return back to Idaho. She does get, um, extradited back to Idaho. You can't get, can you get extradited back to Idaho from Hawaii? Mm-hmm. She did. She tried to fight it. She tried to, like, fight being extradited to uh, Idaho. I guess they had to bring her back to the States from Hawaii. Yeah. Well, because, um, it's the Idaho police who are, like, charging her. Mm-hmm. It's not the Hawaii people. The Hawaii people are like, Loki, get this crazy lady off the island. Yeah, they're like, get her out of here. We ain't got room for her here. Yeah. That's then, crazy. Yeah. She just says no comment. Like, it's not even a thing. Yeah. Anytime, anytime I see something like that in the news, like I always have to check myself because I'm immediately thinking, okay, you got a kid. I know it's not your kid, but like you adopted that kid. 2014, that's a long time ago. That that kid has been her kid. Why don't you just give him back to his grandparents? Like. Yeah. What option? I don't want him. Go home to grandmama and grandpappy. Uh, That's option one for me. 100% option one. Her option one is. Suffocation. Asphyxiation. Drowning. Poison. Too much Benadryl. Well, June 9th, which is a month ago, Chad is arrested and because this year, two, yeah, one month ago, wow. two sets of human remains are found on his property. In Idaho? In Idaho. Uh, no, it's Tylee and JJ. Yeah, it is. They confirm the next day. Oh, son of a bitch. And the way they found the remains is they looked... Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to tell you. Alex? You know, Alex Cox? Yeah. He died. Oh, really? Just like all of a sudden died in December. Okay. Of a heart attack. He actually died from a heart attack? They're not sure how he died. It was just like, oh, "Oh, he died. They didn't confirm a heart attack? No. The family said it was a heart attack? Mm Mm-hmm. He went peacefully in the night. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he did, you fucking asshole. Yeah. You killed him. Pardon my French. I just get really fired up when you kill children. Yeah. You can, so, you can, I, I literally hope that they stub their toe every morning for the rest of their life on something sharp and, and solid. Like, every morning they wake up, boom, kick the shit out of their toe on the door frame. Boom, kick the crap out of their toe on, 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 the bed frame. You name it, I hope it happens to him every day, and that's just how I feel about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope every morning they do that. And I hope they never have a comfortable pillow again, ever. Well, they won't, because they're going to be in prison. Well, you know what? They better be. They better get used to metal cots. Yeah, they better get used to them prison their mattresses. toe on those metal cots. Oh, my gosh. So they take Alex's phone data. And they, like, track it. Okay. And so they're able to find on Chad's property, like, where they where he was. So Alex did the dirty work for him. See, that's what we're still not sure about. Because Chad was, was with Alex when he buried them or whatever happened. So you're telling me Lori is just manipulating everybody. Right. 
Which, like, she better get charged with. They need to put her away. She's dangerous. Right. She's a cult leader. She is literally a black widow. She's a, she, could, she talks you into doing her dirty work because it's, you love her. Exactly. How do you even ask someone to kill your kids? I imagine you have to take the approach where you have to help that person who you want to do it for you. You have to usher them into the idea themselves. And then once they kind of creak the door, you burst it wide open and then just exploit the hell out of them. So they're, they do have some knowledge that Alex might have been gay. And Lori, like, held that over his head. Oh, I'm going to tell that- everybody you're gay if you don't kill these people. I'd have been like, tell them. I ain't killing somebody just because I... But the, she also said they were zombies. So, like, maybe she convinced him that way. Mm-hmm. That God will save your soul for whatever religious view they have that he might be gay. And, oh, God's not going to love you because you're gay, so you need to kill these zombies and God will let you into heaven. So they're able to ping his cell phone and they were, Chad and him were on his property in September uh-huh. and Chad had texted Tammy, there was a raccoon and I shot it over by the pet cemetery that they had and just making explanations why there was a shot. They found those text messages on the on his phone from the day that Tylee died. But Tylee was burned. They only found like little pieces of her. But then JJ, he was in a black bag under bricks. They dug a hole, put his body in there, laid like bricks over him, and then covered it back up. Mm. And that's all we know. More stuff will be coming out, I'm sure. And we will definitely continue to follow this case. But so now Lori and Chad are both in jail now. Good. But they haven't charged them with homicide yet. They can't prove it. But they did take off the charge of desertion from Lori. Okay. So I'm hoping that that means that since they're saying, oh, you actually didn't desert your kid like. You murdered him. I'm hoping that's what they're trying to say. Mm. But, yeah, I feel like they're going to have a really hard time proving everything just because there is so many weird things. That's insane. But Melanie. With an I? With an I-E. I-E. They were over at the house. Okay. Around the time that JJ disappeared. And she said... There's a quote where she said, and Alex came and picked up JJ and he was sleeping in his arms. And I remember it because it was such a tender moment. And that was the last time JJ was ever seen. Oh, Alex killed him. Yeah. But like, did Lori poison him? To put him asleep? She might have. We don't know yet. But so this is a case that is developing every day. There's there are no updates. resolution. How are we doing this to our listeners? They're sitting at home saying, no, I got to know what happened. No, but now they know. So when there is resolution. We can all jump and shout like when OJ Simpson got acquitted. I pray that she does not get acquitted because that would be murder. She's crazy. Yeah. If she gets out, stay away from her. She is a loose cannon. Who kills zombies. Horrible. Bad people doing bad things. So I researched this case from Reddit like crazy. Read so many things. I listened to the We Saw the Devil podcast. And East Idaho News was a really big person that covered the case and NBC News. So that's where I got all the info. And that is the definition of a doozy. Don't you think? Yes. You look exhausted over there from this case. I'm so... My brain is melting out of my ears. I think I spent more effort trying to uh, rationalize and understand the family tree than when I was trying to learn calculus-based physics in college, Mm -hmm. which I only barely learned. (laughs) It's a a good comparison. Calculus versus Lori's family tree. Yeesh. Any last words? Yeah. Anything you want to say to uh, Lori and Chad? In the words of 
let's say some of our favorite podcasts, right? In the words of True Crime Garage, Chad, you're a real douche canoe. And I hope you have bad beer the rest of your life. If you don't know True Crime Garage, go check them out. I like them a lot. They drink beer and talk about stuff. <sighs> but yeah, I'm exhausted too. This case is crazy. But so the, the people who died in this case, I just want to say their names. Joseph Ryan Jr., he all he did die. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, Tylee's dad. The third husband. Yes. He died of a heart attack and was cremated. Was it a mysterious heart attack? Yes. A lot was, of these guys died from heart attacks. Just saying. He was a healthy person and he died and Lori had him uh, cremated very quickly. Um, really? Tar- yes. Like the next day? Mm-hmm. And then the following afternoon she was having a martini party i'm sure she was charles he was shot by alex Tam- tammy daybell uh she died of suspicious circumstances um tylee ryan jj vallow uh all of you rest in peace alex cox also died i hope you, you can do rest, not rest you can peace. rest almost in peace restlessly I hope you rest in restlessness because I think you were involved. 100% involved, this guy. I hope you're stubbing your toe in hell. And you can't ever leave there. And it never stops. Well, we've definitely watched a lot of true crime stuff with in this last month, but notably, oh, we watched Unsolved Mysteries. They brought it back. If you haven't heard, Unsolved Mysteries is back. It's streaming. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Yes, it's on Netflix. And if you don't know what it is, it was an old show that used to be around where they would tell you about stories that weren't solved. Kind of like this one, where you kind of know what happened. You know who it happened to, and you may or may not know who's involved, but you don't know who done it. Check them out. Pretty cool episodes. I think one of them is in French, and there's subtitles, so that's fun. Definitely can't watch that and drink at the same time because there's a whole lot going on. But yeah, they're back. That's fun. Been watching that. So interesting. This lady died in her hair salon and no one knows what happened. Go check it out. Not a sponsor, but Unsolved Mysteries is available on Netflix streaming now. We do have a sponsor. Oh, yes. Peacocks. Yes. So Bracken and I, we are side hustlers. Uh, We have a tassel earring business on tasselearring.com. Follow us on Instagram at Murder Radio what's Show. Our, what's our Instagram handle? Murder Radio Show. What's our, for the people in the back. Murder Radio Show. Are we on Twitter? Our handle is Murder Radio Murder Show. Murder Radio Show. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We upload these to YouTube. And Hello. don't forget, we are streaming on Spotify and Apple Play. I'm not sure where you're listening to this, but wherever it is, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to give us a five-star review and let people know what you think. We've had some really awesome people giving us some good reviews on our Facebook page, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, so that's been really encouraging. Thank you to everybody out there listening. We really appreciate all of the feedback. And, uh, you know, if you like the show and you want to see more and hear more, um, let us know. Hey, I love what you do. Keep it up. And make sure you tell a friend. Tell someone about us because that's the only way they're going to hear us. Uh, well, anything else? Um, also on MurderRadio.com if you want to read the show notes. We have a website? We have a website. Oh my gosh, we're and, official. And so we put it up like a blog. So if all of the things that we said today, you're like, wait a second, I got to go read that, you can go there. I I was that way. Yes. <laughs> so if you have any questions about this murder, we're, we'll be happy to... Uh, do a little mini episode in the future doing updates any questions that you have so shoot them over Uh, we hope that you enjoyed it and if there's an episode that you have an idea for you have a favorite murder or maybe you want to hear us talk about something that caught your ear let us know we'd love to know what kind of murders you want to hear us talk about and if you are watching anything amazing let us know because we love uh, watching Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and we just watch all the shows and uh, you'd doing be doing us a great service if you recommended something to us and have a great day don't you 7-eleven pizzas or stub your toe i'm bracken and i'm ariel and this is, is murder, murder radio, radio.